Good morning, my app are art back. Here's the plan. Number one, catch up with what I missed yesterday. Number two, perimeter walls. Number three, carport. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> So, a word of explanation. Yesterday I was away for a lot of the day trying to sort out various different things and at the end of the day I took my wife to visit her best friend forever uh, and drove her over there in pouring rain what seemed like a thousand miles. It wasn't, but it seemed like it. By the time I got back, um, rather tired. So given that there wasn't a huge amount of footage from yesterday, by the way, this is the official explanation, there wasn't a huge amount of footage yesterday and I didn't want to waste your time looking at not very much, although some might say that's what I do every day, I thought we'd just skip it. The unofficial explanation is, got home, launched into a bottle of red wine, couldn't be bothered. So, apologies, we will catch up today with what we missed yesterday. So the catch up, we'll start here on the north wall, where they pulled the forms off of a number of the columns along this wall. And you can see they've started already chipping out into the surface, which will allow the plaster that's going to come later to adhere more easily. This one, yesterday when I looked at it, before they chipped it out, I did say to the uh, engineer and to the builder when he came, this is the worst one I've seen so far. I'm not sure how clearly you can make it out, but down at the bottom there, there are some voids, but again, they are not deep, they are quite superficial. And so this, being the worst one I've seen, is still good. So they've done a good job with uh, either using a rebar to poke the concrete as it's poured to keep the holes out, or using their rather large mechanical vibrator. And along the wall, they did a number of uh, pours and they have started now moving forms further down. So the wall itself has been raised up all the way down into the carport, which we'll go and look at now. So carport, walls all around, all the tie beams were finished and poured, if they hadn't been done the day before. And they are up to the third or because of the lie of the land, in some cases, the third and a half layer of concrete hollow blocks. And as you can see, they're now extending that further. They're doing some backfill. So this really did develop yesterday quite a lot. Uh, and it is, as we requested, going to be a little bit further elevated to try and ensure we don't get water. And if YouTube doesn't like the music that you might be able to make out in the background, it's not me. South wall. It's always slightly tricky to get a film of this, but they did extend a lot actually yesterday. Me saying there wasn't much footage. Uh, yeah, that's me being lazy. They did extend quite a long way there, right the way past this decrepit falling down building. Uh, and they've come out quite a long way the other side now. Uh, we'll go and have a look the other side just to check it. This is the other side of the knackered falling down building and they've done all of this and they are extending the trenches further down here. Coelito here, he's getting confident. He reckons they'll finish, well basically everything today. Maybe not quite, maybe that's slightly overconfident, but they did make a lot of progress. Here we go, the delivery crew, bagging up 
well, right now, the gravel, but basically bagging up everything and delivering it to wherever on site it needs to go. It's, it's jobs like this that, you know, don't get a lot of attention. It's equally hard work, but without it, nothing happens. And this isn't really catch up, but it kind of uh, transitions into that. So they are putting more forms, uh, both around the carport and will be along the north wall, the perimeter wall. And something else that is utterly crucial today and explains why the engineer, engineer Raphael, when I went up to him this morning, had a huge smile on his face. I said, why are you so happy? He said, money day. It's Saturday, so they get paid. It's uh, 10.30. Guys have had their morning break. So we'll have a quick look around. And here, just to come back to these uh, columns where they've basically chiseled out indentations. These columns, when they pour them, have a pretty smooth surface, particularly the way these guys have been pouring them. They're very smooth. So in order to get the plaster coat, which is coming later, to basically not slide off it straight away, they chip out these little holes. Ingenious. And Richard, who we'll come to in a second, has been bending in the column rebar which was previously, like this one over here, straight up, right from where the, it comes out of the column, to more like your Eiffel Tower-ish look, bent in. No idea why. Try and find out. And here he is, Richard, man at work. This is another one of our men of steel, He's almost always found over in the workshop, but he's ventured out into the sun to make adjustments on all of these columns. Back at the carport, they are pouring the bases of the columns, amongst other things. So yeah, we're fully raised up, I guess, to just below where the concrete will be poured after they put the backfill and then the gravel and then the rebar grid that will strengthen that concrete floor but we're on to column pouring the bases at least up to the height of the where the wall is now and here we have the north wall team and they are extending the columns further down we're not a million miles away from reaching the front of the property. Still be, I imagine, several days because they, again, once they get down to the property next to us, they're going to have to butt up the wall against that wall, and that always causes challenges. Uh, they don't have trees to deal with on this side, which they do on the south side of the wall, but nevertheless, it will slow them down. And Ronwell is back in his home where he spends most of his time, although as we've seen, he can do everything, but continuing to make the steel, columns, stirrups, footings, beams. It's like the guys who ferry materials around. You know, this doesn't get noticed quite as much, but this is the engine room. Nothing happens without Romwell and his team getting these steel rebar bent and cut into shape. Right, Manny is preparing lunch. <laughs> there you go. That's your lesson for the day. Tomato with chicken in the Matisan Manok. And because it's Manny, it has chilies. Lots of chilies. <laughs> It will be, I am sure, delicious. So, South Wall team. Coelito. Yes. Joel. Rico. Fred or Rico. Rico. And Adrian. Hi. Whose face I never see. We don't, we don't know what he looks like. It's a secret. But they are carrying on. 
on the south wall, moving further and further along. Doing a great job. So it's 3.15, the guys have had their break and we have a non-singing Ronwell. I haven't caught him singing yet, but we will, because you need to hear him, he's got a great voice. Right, so along the top here now, we have beams going, oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sections. I just made that number up, but never mind. And here is the first part of Romwell putting forms, getting ready to pour the concrete. Right, and here's where we have the Eiffel Tower effect on the rebar. Uh, and it is something to do with the tie beams going across. I couldn't for the life of me figure out what it was, but there you go. But I am absolutely assured that the concrete from this point upwards will remain at the same dimension, so there will just be more concrete on the outside of these rebar. The, con the column will be the same all the way up in terms of the dimensions. And another column in the process of being poured with concrete up to the level of the hollow block. Hey, and Juanito here I'm is... Juanito Torres. Hello, Philippines. <laughs> Juanito, Juanito is very shy. I can, I can never get him to talk. Actually, we can hardly ever get Juanito to be quiet, but that's fantastic. He's a happy fellow. He's a happy guy. It's good. <laughs> he makes everybody else happy. Look, Jeff's got a big smile on his face now. It's, Jeff's happy. He's working with Juanito. And this is new today. We had the hole. But we've now got <laughs> JR reminding me of his name. Oh, I did remember. And Ariel over here, big smile on his face as always. But this extra bit that picks out, <laughs> that juts out, is actually an extension of the entrance hall. Uh, it'll come out just a fraction under a meter beyond the wall for the rest of the front of the house. The south side wall crew moving along. They may. No promises. They may get some help next week in the form of another concrete mixer. Builder says, possibly, maybe, he might bring another one in. He might go and buy another one to help these guys out. Because at the moment, they're having to do everything entirely by hand. And this is where the focus of attention will be in about 30 minutes, because A, payday takes place here and B, Manny and helpers have been cooking up a storm. They have a whole load of fish that they are grilling right now. They've got a mixture and there may be a red horse or two involved. So that's it. It's the end of the day on Saturday, so it's the end of the work week. I'm not going to show you around again. We did that a few minutes ago. So obviously nothing dramatic will have changed in that time. So guys are getting, uh, getting their money and then they're about to settle down to their feast. We might go and have a quick look at the feast that awaits them. So this is the first part of the feast, light brandy. An unusual concept, but I did try it last Sunday and it's actually rather nice. And underneath the banana leaves, fish, tons of bangus. And the famous red horse. And there is more. Under there is dessert. What more could you want on a currently beautiful Saturday afternoon? Right, see you next week.